I thought we could just start with a question and answer and get into some, some facts about um, some of the issues that are facing the multi-ethnic market. I have a personal stake in it. I am um, creating a little brand on the side. So I'm uh, really invested in this concept. Um, through Cloutier, I was able to work with Jafra Color um, a year and a half ago as their spokesperson. And these are some of the products we created. Um, one, one of the things that I've found working with the chemists is the primary issue is that the base uh, formula is, is white. It's the color of a lotion. And of course it has, you know, zinc and aluminum and titanium. So all of those pigments are white. So to try to tint that as you're going forward is really, can be challenging. I'm not a fan of mineral makeup. Um, the primary issue is that iron oxide is unstable. So it starts to oxidize as soon as it hits the air, as soon as the skin starts to breathe, which poses a problem for darker skin. And I think it's, I think honestly, it's an issue for everyone. They, you think you look great and then you go out in the sun and, you know, the talc and the bismuth oxychloride and the zinc start to take over. So that's my, that's my personal pet peeve. Um, but my, my concern, and I, I'm not in finance, I don't know how these numbers really translate, but um, when I'm looking at the ethnic spending power, and that's everyone combined, um, it's an interesting, t but all of the minorities combined is four point, well, will be $4.2 trillion. So there's a market. Um, we were talking earlier about some of the changes that are going on. I know that some of the brands, um, department store brands are adding shades, um, which is wonderful, it's interesting. At the same time, they're adding two or three shades to the end of the color spectrum of their currently existing line. And I'm not getting the shades that are working for richer skin tones. I, I put a little Facebook post that I'm gonna be coming here and had all of these comments and um, coming in and some off the record about the concern of people, primarily African-American women, but um, the concern that they have for, from caramel or cafe latte to chocolate, there really isn't, there isn't one line that really nails everything. In researching, one of the facts that I thought was interesting is that by um, 2020, a fifth of the women between 18 or 49 and 49 will be Hispanic women. You know, by 2050, 47% of the U.S. population will be a person of color. And so the, it's time for the industry to really start to, and I, I can't say start to, I think within the scope of current marketing and funding, there are some changes being made. It needs to be a little bit more aggressive um, in this age of Obama's in the White House. It's really time <laughs> to be more inclusive. I think Black Up in Paris is paraben free, but that's just paraben free. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have the sulfate, sulfites, um, you know, other types of preservation systems that aren't working for people of color. That's another issue though. One of the skin facts I mentioned is that um, the, the fibroblast cells that make collagen in dark skin types, it's actually binucleated. So they're, two nuclei that are creating, I just, I love this stuff, when she was talking, I just got so excited, that are creating um, co the collagen fibers. So there's actually a, a denser mesh of collagen, um, but that also means that then there are, is the hair follicle becomes involved in any um, react, any contact dermatitis, any type of reaction, uh, allergic reaction. So that becomes an issue when looking at formulation because there are certain um, ingredients that have a greater resource and all for in hair color is a big issue in among African Americans primarily.